In Blood of Heroes, players can use magic or brute force to punish their enemies. Even the slightest mistake in this arena's brawler can end in certain death. I mean, come on, the game's name is Blood of Heroes, that kind of sums it up, right? Well, we actually have quite a few more questions. So joining us today are game director Dr Dmitry Varanov and the game's community lead, Ulad Leeson. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, and thank you for having us. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah, so for the uninitiated, kind of just give us a quick rundown of what exactly Blood of Heroes is. Blood of Heroes was born from an idea of making a PvP fighting game with melee battles. At the time, there were next to no games of this kind available on the market. Uh, what I mean is we had as a great by all multiplayer games games, uh, for example, Rooney or Legendary Blade of Darkness, or game modes at primary single-player games, for example, Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. Today, Blood of Heroes is a game about fierce warriors, uh, the heroes of borderline world who live and fight endlessly uh, on their personal quest for glory. It features an easy-to-start combat system that revolves around simple combinations of battle moves, like light and heavy attacks and dodges, uh, and so on. The premise is simple. Block the light attack, dodge from the heavy one. These are the basics that players figure out and get used to very quickly. Uh, but then goes the very long list of details. Uh, every hero has dozens of nuances to them, personal sets of moves, abilities, counteractions, and so on. Best players have to keep all of them in mind and incorporate into their strategies, find the best moments to defend and to attack in every particular matchup, which makes every battle feel like no other. Yeah, absolutely, and we are going to get into that, some of that gameplay, but we're looking at the CGI trailer now, which kind of teases some story beats, so I'm curious if the story is something that will evolve and be built on as you play through the game. Oh, yeah, uh, you totally can expect that. Um, in our opinion, it's next to impossible to construct a believable setting without a good, well-grounded story that lies in the foundation of that setting. We sh should do have such a story. At the moment, Blood of Heroes has a pretty vast and well-developed lore, and uh, as the game progresses, we plan to reveal it bit by bit, lifting the veil on certain details of our green world, on its characters and their relationships, and so on. We plan on doing so to Blood of Heroes related videos and game hints and leaks and probably even community events and, and, and initiatives. Lore is a big part of Blood of Heroes and we definitely want to share it and get players engaged into it. And to revealing its mysteries and cracking its secrets as well as arguing about its details. Yeah, so we're looking at gameplay here. Um, and I actually saw before, you know, we had some, the, the characters selecting, you know, a class and weapons. Uh, so would you mind giving us a breakdown of some of the different play styles we'll encounter in the game? Actually, in our case, players choose not weapon. Uh, they choose heroes. Mm -hmm. And heroes are weapon in itself. <laughs> uh, heroes go a bit beyond these two entities. Uh, each of our heroes has such character-specific weapon and a set of basic characteristics. But in addition uh, to that, two unique abilities, special counteraction, and certain advantages and disadvantages. Trying to balance all of our characters for all the available game modes, we decided to abandon the idea of using the traditional pure classes. Instead, we introduced mixed classes, and every hero represents their own unique playstyle. Every player is free to choose a playstyle that fits them best, from slow defense oriented one to quick and aggressive, from stationary and positional to ever moving and super mobile. From the one looking uh, for that one massive deadly blow, to those who prefer disintegrating their opponents with a long series of lighting fast pinches. Yes, it's important to mention that every single one of our heroes is a good. Uh, at the boss killing and surviving, as long as you get uh, on the right side and find the proper approach to them. 
Or you can just go with the hero whose playstyle fits you the most. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like we're in uh, the dual mode here. Um, so can you guys tell me a little bit, will this game mode include kind of game progression or is it mostly kind of just to spar with your friends and test your build? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when open beta goes live, we'll have three dual-like game modes in Blood of Heroes. Mm -hmm. The first one is a fighting queue arena bot. Uh, not exactly a separate mod, but rather a way to sharpen your battle skills while still staying in the lobby. Yes, the bot is waiting for you in the lobby, and you can fight it while looking for a multiplayer game. Our closed beta players uh, mentioned that fighting arena bot is the best way to train one's skills. Um, say stamina control or parrying. But of course fighting the bots gets boring very quickly. Whenever that happens, try going to friendly duel. Another duel mode that varies power uh, a friend and test your build from your question. Friendly duel is one of the best way to try and see how certain actions can work in real matches against real people. Finally, there is the duel mode itself, an actual game mode that we think uh, of as a, the competitive mode of Blood of Heroes, your ultimate skill te test with no teammates to rely on and no excuses, just you, your opponent and pure skill. And I noticed earlier that there were some uh, cosmetic options for the arenas. So uh, are these just cosmetic or do they affect gameplay as well? Very much so. Every player has their own home base. We call it personal, personal arena uh, that they can decorate in accordance with their test and show off to their opponents and duels. Uh, that's one of our favorite Blood of Heroes features. So, some of these decorations are purely cosmetic, but even they can greatly affect the overall feel of the game. Take Weather, for instance. Our closet beta players mentioned that fighting under the soft light of crimson sun sunset is very different from fighting under the green lighting of nighttime gloom. However, uh, some decorations are meant to directly affect the gameplay. Arena Chorus, for example, change duel gameplay from purely face-to-face -face athletic with playing disc to dangerous, tricky uh, and unpredictable with hexagon, where any awkward, poorly calculated move can lead to defeat. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. So what kind of strategies do you see players employing when it comes to fighting in these like kind of tighter corridors as opposed to more open spaces in the arena? Um, well, actually, the way we see it, deliberately taking the battle to tight corridors or to open areas is quite a strategic thing to do it in itself. Uh, but in regards to your questions, it all depends on particle heroes and their available skill sets. In, in Blood of Heroes, weapon hits can collide with environment. So in order to successfully fight in tight corridors, one has to choose characters that can perform stride sharp at attacks. In this manner, players will not get punished for being uh, negligent with their attacks. But that is just one the part of creation, personal action. The other part, team synergy, is far more interesting. For example, our players have come up with a strategic formation for Brawl that we had never considered ourselves. In this formation, one character uses his ch character's and abilities specifically in tight corridors to cover the, his teammates, who if positioned properly, absolutely destroy the opponent team. In other words, one player sacrifices his health to decoy the opponent's team into a tight corridor, which then turned into a death trap. This is just one example of the strategies you mentioned in the equation. Our players recognized and developed this one, and we really hope that we will have dozens of such examples in the future. It's a very pleasant part when players uh, play not as intended, but as they want. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, Blood of Heroes sure looks, well, bloody. Uh, you can check out the open beta for Blood of Heroes on August 26th on PC. Thank you both so much for joining me today. And remember to stick around on IGN for even more from Gamescom 2021.